Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel, my name is Chantel and today we have a mystery matchbox to create. You can pause the video here and type in a comment and you can edit that comment later on if you had it right or not. I'm going to be creating something from Lord of the Rings. I decided on this because next month, February, will be dedicated, and maybe even beyond February, will be dedicated to the first common room, which will be the Ravenclaw common room. I did not want to do anything in January for Harry Potter. So the next Harry Potter matchbox will be the 25th, which will be after the Ravenclaw common room. But in the meantime, you get this one. Let's get started. I would like to have this one open sideways. And, and obviously this is the base that I always start with. Uh, which is not side opening, but it's it could be top opening. But yeah, I want to have a side opening there. So I'm going to create that in a minute. The inside will be Hobbiton. So not the inside of a Hobbit house, but just the little hill with the little Hobbit house on top, a blue sky in the background and flowers at the front and a little like pathway that goes to the house and the door, obviously. The outside, I would like to give the exterior of a book but a landscape book so the spine will be here and this will be the outside of the book i thought it would be cute so i think we should uh should just create that shall we first i'm going to glue this close because that is what we can do for now and then we'll work out everything else from there onwards full stylus you can score your cardboard so it's more easily to fold. Obviously, I need to cut it to size there. And then this part you can glue on. And the glue that I'm using is Fabri-Tac glue. Always get that question: What glue do you use? I kind of need to do the same on the other side. We have a sideways opening book. Just glue that on. Now for the spine, I want to make some part circles that I can glue on the spine and then glue this on top because it would just hold better. So this die comes from this, um, this thing and it might actually be big enough. So I'm just gonna roll that a couple of times through my um, Big Shot machine and then I'll be back. I've, I've taped this together with some washi tape and now I can you know, mark it and then score it. So this should be all that I need to glue a couple of them here and then make a book back. This is like the same technique that I used for a larger book that I posted on my second channel. I have four of these little gibbers, which is basically four pieces of card glued on top of each other. And this is gonna be the spine. Just placing those gibbers on the glue. And for this purpose, I'm using wood glue. And the reason for that is that it is very strong when used with paper for cardboard. So here we have those four gibbers. And over that, I'm going to overlay this part. And then we have that curved spine of the book. I just need to wedge it together with my one, two, three blocks. And it's like off camera right here. Just let it sit for a moment. So this now opens as a book. I'm gonna close that with a magnet. And the inside is going to be a Hobbit home. And I'm not necessarily making Bilbo's home. However, the door that I will put in will also be green because I love green. So there's that, but it's not necessarily Hobbit, uh, Bilbo's home. So for any diehard fans, which I am not, I'm a fan, but not a diehard fan. It's not Bilbo's home. Let's just make that very clear. So I want the house to sit on a hill and all the Hobbit homes are usually shaped according to that heel. 
which you cannot see here but hopefully now it will be clear a bit like a, a hill itself as well and inside that hill is that little door and then here are windows so here we have the two windows and the door and the little um everything's little sloping steps that go up to the door it's a little bit like bilbo's house but not everything is the same that should sit around the back there and then more at the front i would have that path so i want to have some egg carton to do the path then from cardboard i'll make the door i'll cut out the windows and cut that out of um, cardboard as well and then build it up and then i can place this against what i've built up in um, probably tin foil and tissues and uh, we'll go from there but first let's paint this up so on the outside i kind of think we should go with green as well and then on the inside um obviously it will be largely green because of you know the environment is very very mossy and green and earthy and i was thinking if i do the sunset in the background so going from a orange to a purple and purple orange and then i believe if you want to blend these two colors you need to use white so let's do that okay i normally don't do this with my matchbox projects which i sh probably should be doing is apply gesso just so the paint does doesn't soak into the cardboard and uh it has a nice white layer underneath so let's apply that first Here's my uh, cloudy evening sky. Um, I'm kind of happy that I went with the blue going to purple. Now for the outside, I want to do an aged leather look. So what I decided to do is make like a little swatch card. See what it looks like. So this is the same card stock that I'm using for the matchbox. And I just have some tissue paper and PVA water glue mixture it's a 50 50 mixture that i keep in this jar so i will apply the tissue with the pva water glue mi mixture and then i try to put these very fine wrinkles in then apply green paint and then age it up with a brown paint and end up with an aged leather look on the outside of this matchbox Okay, besides the cover that I still need to attach or make at the front cover and the spine of the book, I am basically done with the outside. So it's now green with the added brown um, paint on the sides, which I just added by going along the edges slightly with a brush very gently and just picking up paint as I needed it, uh, which is the color brown earth and inside and then the inside sky as well so what i what need to do now is um, make this look like pages and after the pages i'll probably do the uh, start doing the inside let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video skillshare skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators why not start a new year by dabbling in something you always wanted to learn explore new skills and get lost in creativity it's curated specifically for learning, which means there are no ads 
and they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. I really love the class Polymer Clay Basics by Stephanie Kilgast. She explains everything to get you started with polymer clay, how to use sculpting tools, build armature, coloring your creations and how to preserve it. The first 1000 people to use the link in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Let's kick off the year by learning something new. And now back to the video. Okay, time to make the interior. I'm still gonna go with that. I need some tin foil for that as well uh, to make the heel. So I will mute the microphone because it's just a horrible sound on camera. So here we go. So now that that is done, I can shape the uh, where I want the entrance to be. Entrance, entrance, the entrance to be somewhere there. Sculpt it a bit more. So if I sculpt that, where I also want to have the um, like the roofs kind of situation of the windows, it is easier to shape it now. See that uh, just a little bit. There's the indent. It's very hard to um, show you that on camera. The round door can go there. And then we need like a, a hilly situation. So with more tin foil, I'm just going to build that up in blobs. So before I build that up, I want to make that little house. I think this looks rather good, but I want to make sure that that door is actually round. Just gonna draw that out two more times so I can layer that and just gonna cut that out. This whole bit house is not super difficult. Um, it's just that layering. It's gonna cut out the windows so I can have uh, some acetate behind it so it shines or so it shines at least so it's reflective. Now that it's cut out and I can put these two on top. I need to cover this entire thing in tissue with some watered down PVA glue and then build up the front area as well. I have all my uh, tissue paper ready and now I'm just going to cover this part in that. Then put this on top, glue it in and build up the rest of the scene with more tin foil and then cover that with tissue paper as well. Here is what I have so far and the back of the windows are yellow because you know light from the inside shining through and now I'm going to paint the whole thing and then apply all these ground covers that I've got here. So I have some static grass, I have some lichen, I also have some tufts and these were all still from a Jezza box and also some gravel. But obviously, if you didn't get the Jezza box, you can also get some moss from the shops. This was just from my local craft store and it's just loose. This is black tea that has been used and dried and then put in a, in a jar. I dried it in the oven, just spread it out on an oven tray and then put it in a jar and that looks like soil. But then also on, I think, Amazon, you can get these. I link everything down below so you can get everything for yourself if you would like to make one. So you can get these little tubs online and they are all differently filled, just letting you know. But some of them have tiny little flowers in them, like that one and this one. And uh, they are perfect for these kind of dioramas.
As you saw, I added those bits of egg carton, paint them and added some gravel as well. And now I'm going to build up those green parts of the diorama and show you the end result. And this is it for the mystery matchbox. I'm thinking of creating more mystery matchboxes every so often. Let me know what kind of other mystery matchboxes you would like to see in this matchbox book format. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All my social media can be found in the description box below. And if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And of course, become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!